I felt Swami had become upset with me. And I looked at him little stunned. Swami went behind me and gave me a whack. At that very moment when I got up and saw my previous lifetimes, I understood very clearly that being in his physical presence that particular night had taken me beyond the Manipurak Chakra. That is why the subtle impressions of all my previous lifetimes were visible to me vividly. Who is Bhagwan Baba? What is his nature? What is our relationship with him? What does he expect from us? He called me close, I put my elbows on his knees, my hair touching his chest and then Swami started locking up that chain behind my back and whispered into my ears, Hey, your prayers reached me. Om Sri Sai Ram, with utmost love and humility, let us first offer our most loving and humble salutations at the lotus feet of our most beloved Mother Sai, Riverdellers, sisters and brothers. It gives me a great sense of joy and satisfaction to be in the precincts of that holy place which has been blessed profusely by Bhagwan's presence. In some way or the other, Swami has touched all of us. In some way or the other, Swami has transformed all of us. <clears throat> In some way or the other, Swami has infused Himself into our lives. Thank you, Brother Lakshmi, for a lot of flowery expression of your love towards me, which you must discount by 89%. But yes, Satyasai institutions are those hallowed places where transformation happens in the presence of Bhagwan without even your own knowledge. And that is why any institution that works on the principles of Bhagwan, that works to follow the values that Bhagwan has taught all of us, is to be saluted, has to be bowed down, and has to be revered. Once talking about Swami's institutions, how valuable they are, let me narrate to you one small instance. We were with Swami and at that time, Swami had had some hip injury, Swami's shoulder was not moving very well. Swami was on the physical level in excruciating pain. And every time we will get an occasion, we will bow down to Him, plead to Him and say, Swami, you have cured millions by your mere sankalpa. Swami, if you will, you can walk right now. Swami, why don't you cure yourself? Every day we will shed tears, wash his lotus feet with our tears and plead to him and say, Swami, please, please cure yourself, Swami. We would like to see you walking again and not confined to this wheelchair. Why have you taken this upon yourself? And Swami would always smile and say, you know what, children? This body of Bhagwan has not come for itself. It is for the sake of devotees. You talk about my limbs not being fine. Do you understand the meaning of the limbs of Bhagwan? The Satya Sai Seva organizations are the limbs of Bhagwan. Till the time the Satya Sai Seva organizations are afflicted by power struggle, by jealousy, by egoism, by selfishness, how can Swami walk again? Till the very end, we kept pleading to Swami and He kept promising that He will walk again. But maybe, maybe somewhere, as devotees of Swami, we also were not able to contemplate deep enough and set right Swami's body in the way that He wanted. But also let us understand that Swami said, 
Chattisai Seva organizations and its various forums are my limbs. To be associated with Chattisai Seva organizations is to be associated with Swami himself, that is Swami's own words. Let us never forget this particular aspect. Yes, Swami takes care of everyone. From beginning to end, if we understand how much Swami has taken care of us, I would say, even if for a hundred lifetimes our skins were to made into his slippers, it is not sufficient. We have not been grateful enough. If for a hundred lifetimes our skins were to be taken away for making slippers for the, for the God who is so merciful, so benevolent, ever giving, never asking in return. To be associated with such a size seva organizations is to be associated with Swami's body itself. We are the cells of Swami's body if we associate. If we go away from Satya Sai Seva organizations, we live our own fate. Yes, Swami is always there with us, but we have made that choice and that is why we will have to go through the trial and tribulations of going away from Swami's body. We must understand that Swami has laid for us a beautiful highway that takes us directly to Him. When we take the flight from Delhi to Mumbai, we don't have to row the boats, we don't have to stop at traffic signals, we don't have to take a train journey. We directly fly in one and a half hours from Bangalore to Mumbai. But if we want to, to travel by walk, that path is also available to us. Going away from Swami's organizations is like walking the path to Him. Yes then you have to cross all the trials and tribulations that will come your way. And for that, we ourselves will only be responsible. That is the first thing that comes to my mind. Second, Brother Lakshmi told me that you must share something about how you came to Swami. It's a very important aspect that how we come to Bhagwan, that path we should always cherish and be grateful to. It so happened that my, when my father took an official accommodation. He was working with National Council of Educational Research and Training called NCERT, which makes us as CBSE syllabus books. In Delhi, we shifted to the official accommodation and our neighbor was a person called Dr. B. S. Goyal. He was like a father figure to our family. He was going through his own journey, what he described as from dust to divinity. At that time, when he came to, on the spiritual path per force, not by his own option, but he was forced into the spiritual path, because one day he was practicing yogasanas and a subtle power, which is called Kundalini, aroused in him. And he started having very mystical experiences, but he was not able to comprehend what these experiences meant. So he started feeling a little depressed about, he thought, have I really lost my mind? Have I really lost my way? I am a PhD in political science. I am, I am a, I'm an editor in NCRT. I am at a very high post, but I am not able to comprehend these experiences. Something is wrong with me, probably. He was not able to comprehend those experiences. And one night, in the winters of Delhi, when he was sleeping with a quilt on his face, somebody removed that quilt from his face, and he opened his eyes and he saw somebody whom he had never seen before a halo of hair and orange robes, a subtle form. And he smiled at himself and said, yes, certainly I'm going mad. <laughs> I'm seeing people. I was seeing lights inside earlier. I was imagining things inside me. Now I'm imagining things outside also. I'm certainly going mad. So he put his quilt back and tried to sleep. Second time, the quilt was removed and he saw somebody is still there. This person has not gone away. So he thought, it must be a hallucination of my mind. Let me put my hand through him and understand. And he put his hand through Swami's subtle form and his hand went through. He said, yes, certainly I am mad. So he put his quilt back again and he slept. For the third time, Swami removed the quilt from his face and said, get up, do meditation. Now he said, for three times nobody can remove a quilt from my face. It has to be somebody. There is some power, somebody who is standing here and wanting me to awaken to some particular aspect of life which I am here to not aware about. So he got up and he asked, 
this person with a hello of black hair and uh, and orange robes and he said who are you and swami replied you were my devotee in my previous incarnation as shirdi sai i have come again in this form come to put aparti and saying so swami walked out of the window of the sixth floor flat that he was living in and he came to bhagwan and swami told him that there is no need for you to come to put aparti why because i am always with you i am always the resident of your heart wherever you are and when he shared his experiences of coming to bhagwan his his journey from what he says dust from divinity because we heard all this we developed as a family faith in bhagwan so he left his house and he made an ashram in haryana we used to visit him and he would ask us why do you come all the way here there is no need please remember he would he would always tell us please remember there is only one guru in this world and that is bhagwan shri satya sai baba there is no other guru in this world and i would tell him guru ji we we saw you in our dream and he would always laugh and say did you see me in your dream i even don't know about it it is your faith in in my guidance your faith in this particular form that i am guiding you to on the right foot path that swami from your own heart has appeared in your dream in my form even i don't know but if you ask bhagwan what was the experience he will tell you verbatim because it was no other than bhagwan himself swami is the generator of this energy in this entire world and whom we call as our revered ones saints and sages and gurus and guides they are the ones who are like small bulbs twinkling with the same energy that swami is generating he is the brahmana nayaka purna avatar bhagwan shri satya sai baba that is why our entire focus of life has to be not on any person who glows with his glory for some time like a zero watt bulb all these bulbs that are glowing here are glowing from one source of energy there are people who transmit this energy on to us and make us glow for a particular while but we must always understand Swami is the guru and guide for every being in this entire universe not just you and me and that is why medium is important the train that we travel also has to be revered and kept clean but it doesn't mean that the train is the end of our journey train is only a medium to take us to a destination similarly every guru and guide is only a medium a transportation medium for us to take to bhagwan and that is why though we should be reverential to every guru and guide our focus should entirely be on bhagwan because bhagwan is the brahmana nayaka purna avatar that is why in our journeys to bhagwan we have to understand certain important aspects first of all who is swami <clears throat> the second aspect is what is his nature the third aspect is where are we in respect to bhagwan if bhagwan is a destination at this point in time where do we stand in respect to that particular goal fourth what path we should take to bhagwan which is the best and fifth is what is the next best step that we must take some of these things if we clarify and if we are clear about swami would always say be clear the rest will follow who is bhagwan baba somebody asked swami he was he he was invited to our campus for a moral class and he shared his experience and he asked swami <clears throat> this youth leader from karnataka and he asked swami what is god's true nature actually and swami said <clears throat> it is light understand that it is light light which is both has got a form and it also doesn't have beyond form one day we were all sitting in the presence of bhagwan in the interview room and the girl students of the primary school were putting up a gratitude program and the students were singing beautiful songs and bhajans with with great fervor with great devotion songs like tu pyar ka sagar hai teri ek boond ke pyase hum o ma sai ma jab koi baat bigad jaye every moment of our life and swami was literally melted in fact swami used to come into the interview room to wipe his tears so he will come take up his wipe his tears and look at us and then swami said see look at the devotion of these little girls 
I don't even speak to them on a, on a regular basis, but even then their devotion is par excellence. And we said, yes, Swami, their devotion is par excellence. Then Swami went out. He said, let my chair be shifted now from the gents to the ladies' side, near these children. I would like to listen to their songs from nearby. And Swami listened to those songs. Then Swami came back. He was totally melted. And Swami said, looking at us, he said, boys, I call you every day for interview. I talk to you on a daily basis. How many times you have traveled with me? But even then, compared to these little children, these girls, your devotion is nothing. I felt slightly hurt. I said, I thought probably, you know, we are in form. Swami speaks to us. That is why we are devotees. We had made a... a we had given ourselves benefit of doubt, to, so to say. But here was Swami putting us in our right place and said, compared to these, certainly... The, devo the devotion of ladies is always much greater than men. But here, Swami was starting to compare our devotion to theirs. So here came in the problem for us. So Swami went out again, came back, and then started giving examples and uh, similes of what our devotion was. Swami said, your devotion is like of those frogs who sit in the marsh, make croaking sounds, and don't know the value of the fragrance and the beauty of the lotus flower. You are like those. You keep talking devotion, devotion, Swami will love you, Swami will love you. It's like croaking of those frogs. But compared to these, you don't even have an iota of devotion. Now this became too much for me to take. And as Swami passed by me, I got up to my knees and I held Swami's full arm from below to up and said, Swami, Swami, it was like a crisis for me. I said, Swami, Please give me devotion, Swami. At least now give me devotion. Okay, God, you had forgotten to give me devotion at the beginning of time. But you are God. You can at least give me devotion now. Yes, I am like a frog who doesn't have devotion. I am nothing in comparison. They are like the Mount Everest and I am like the deep valley. Fine, it's okay. But at least now give me that devotion. For a moment, Swami glared at me. And he removed his hand from my grips with Herculean strength. I felt Swami had become upset with me. And I looked at him a little stunned. Swami went behind me and gave me a whack. It was not a slap. It was not a tap. It was not anything which is simple and humble. It was a whack. For one second, I saw stars in front of my eyes. And tears involuntarily brimmed to the brink of my eyes. I thought, God, Swami is comes, he has become really angry with me because Swami gave me a, such a whack. I looked at Swami totally stunned and Swami looked towards me and said, did I hurt you? Very coolly, did I hurt you? Now what do I reply, yes or no? I didn't know, so I kept quiet. And I was aghast when Swami gave himself also a similar whack on his own head. That broke me down completely and I started shedding tears, holding his feet and said, Swami, Swami, why did you do that? How can God ever hurt? God only loves, God only bestows, God only gives. Swami, why did you ever hit your own self? I started crying bitterly, holding his feet and Swami removed his feet and said, now go out and sit. My breath as if left me for good, I thought something has gone amiss, absolutely. But now look at my status. I'm moving out of the interview room from Bhagwan's presence and moving out. With every step that I'm taking out, I see the world change around me. I see that a, a magnificent white light is not just pervading, but constituting everything in the universe. The people, the places, the floor, the roof, the furniture, me, Swami, every devotee sitting there is actually constituted by that brilliant white light. And as I go out and sit, I am not able to control. That experience is so overwhelming, so overwhelming. And I start to hear the end part of Omkaram, the sound of mmm, that's the last part of the Omkaram, pervading everywhere. It took me a lot of time to come back to my own senses. 
what swami can grant us what swami can give us what swami can bestow upon us in one fraction of a second in one whack maybe for you and me otherwise will take a million years to get maybe will take a thousands of lifetimes to get swami is the one who alone is capable who knows absolutely the karmic balances that we hold from all our previous lives and in one fraction of a second he can cancel them and give us a new life nobody else can no guru can no saint can no sage can sometimes we get very enamored by miracles sometimes we also will go to swami and say swami holidays time event that particular place that vibhuti is coming that lady is there who is giving out lingam and then swami <laughs> swami will be very unimpressed by our narration swami said boys if you go to somebody and ask him for a visiting card and he gives you one the next day again you go to that person and ask him for a visiting card he may give you still maybe you lost that previous visiting card third day again you go and ask for a visiting card fourth day again you go ask for a visiting card will that person will say something is wrong with you you gone mad yesterday the last three days i have been giving you a visiting card the fourth day again you come and ask for the same visiting card are you mad Swami says, "Yes, miracles do happen. I give certain powers to certain individuals for a small span of time, but that's an individual grace given to an individual or to their family. It is not for public exhibition. It is not for collection of money. It is not for making a big show out of it. If someone does that, absolutely don't trust. Don't go. Why? Because ultimately, the purpose of life." is not to see miracles is the purpose of life is to go within and realize what a big miracle you already are is there a greater miracle than all of us one mr kasturi was sitting along and their hands were nearly touching each other on the on the dining table and then there was a discussion about miracle and then mr kasturi swami i want to see a miracle swami said you are my greatest miracle he said swami how swami said see there are trillions of cells in you each living each working in perfect coordination from one cell of your parents you were born and all the faculties were granted to you and you continue to have those faculties till your lifetime for a hundred years without stopping your heart continues to beat all the time without stopping your lungs continue to breathe your blood circulation continues to happen all your internal organs your eyes continue to see the entire cosmos is it not a miracle what greater miracle is there for us to see than our own bodies and that is why never ever be attracted by miracles understand that you alone are the greatest miracle that swami has created but in our journeys on to him we have had various stops we have had various bottlenecks we have had various lifetimes let us try to understand that it is swami and swami alone that can make us overcome all these past accumulated samskaras and make our journey on to him smoother and straight forward let me tell you by one very personal experience which i have not narrated in other forums but i am mo now motivated to share that also with you <clears throat> it was in the year 1999 that we had gone to kodaikanal after we come back from kodaikanal normally it is life as usual you go and stay in the hostel Swami will not talk to you, look at you, and you become a normalized human being. You you come to the real ground level after being in Kodaikanal Hills for a long time. But that particular year, Swami continued to shower His grace upon us, gave us separate rooms on the three side, and said, "Boys, I will call you separately. You can come and you know be with me, have lunch with me, or I'll call you for special sessions." And it continued to be. But suddenly, one letter came, and the letter came from where? From the principal of the college in Puttaparthi. asking swami that the research scholars be sent back to puttaparthi for entrance examination duties and we thought our honeymoon had ended swami called us and said boys all the research scholars please pack up your luggage go your mother in law is calling you you have to go and do examination duty he said we held on swami you are our mother father guide guru everything swami please don't put us in the hands of the mother in law swami please keep us here please keep us here please keep us here so with our pleadings and all that swami also you know put his hand on his face and said ha huh? कुछ सोचता है कुछ सोचता है लेट मी थिंक ऑफ समथिंग कुछ तरीका निकालना होगा एंड देन ही सेट हाँ ऑल द रिसर्च स्कॉलर्स 
are today onwards on security duty to Swami. <laughs> and we thought, Swami, what a lame excuse to make <laughs> security duty to Swami. That means what? The Brahmana Nayaka Purnavatar, who is managing the entire galaxies by the wave of his hand, he has to be given security by us, by we mortals. Swami said, don't worry about all that. Two of the boys sleep in my room, three boys outside, remaining boys sleep on the ground floor. Today onwards, I am sending word through Narsi Murthy that all of you are on security duty. So you cannot come to Puttaparthi. We said, Swami, great, thank you very much. We have, we have, really, this is a great escape. So on, on the first day, Swami called us, uh, this, me and one other boy, inside his room at 6 p.m. So we were very excited. We had heard so many stories. We'll see lights, Saptarishis will come, Mother Isharama will come, she will distribute gold chains and you know, probably we also will get something in the process as byproducts. We were all imagining sort of, lot of things. At 6 p.m. Swami came. He called us inside. So we closed the door behind us and there were two beddings which were rolled up and kept. He was supposed to unroll them and sleep. Just imagine, at 6.15 every day, actually I go to play for one and one and a half hours. But at 6, six o'clock in the evening, I'm supposed to go to bed. Now naturally there was no sleep and then so much of excitement about what is going to happen now? What is going to happen? So the entire night, me and my other friend, we were not able to sleep at all. We were just observing Swami. And let me tell you, the next 77 days I observed this, Swami does not sleep at all. Swami is beyond hunger and sleep. He doesn't require all these five elements to be taken care of as we require. Somebody asked Swami, do you take sustenance from the cosmic energy for your five elements? Swami said, no, I sustain the five elements. What are you talking? I don't need energy from the cosmic energy. I am the cosmic energy. And I sustain five elements. You are taking it absolutely wrong. Swami doesn't sleep, but Swami sometimes rinses his mouth and in the night. So the first day after we came out, me and the other boy, we had had no sleep at all the entire night. Four o'clock, Swami clicked his fingers and said, come on, get up and, and go to your room. So we went to our room. There was no place to sleep. So I found some place on the sofa and I took somebody else's pillow, now that he was unaware, and I put it on my sofa and I slept. I did not sleep. The moment I put my head on the pillow, I started seeing magnificent, beautiful lights of various hues and colors. Brilliant. One after another, one after another, a firecracker show of unprecedented beauty or imagination inside me. It continued for four to five minutes time. I was amazed. It was not a state of either awakening or sleep. It was something between that. I was not conscious of my surroundings, but I was totally conscious of what's happening inside of me. I saw all these lights and they subsided after some time. And then I intuitively knew what I was seeing now were my previous lifetimes. My previous lifetime, the way I was, previous to that, previous to that, previous to that. Something like 10 to 12 lifetimes in a semicircular fashion, but I could not decipher beyond the third or the fourth lifetime. And I got up. And that very moment, it came to my memory, that particular instance that happened that year in Kodekanal. That year in Kodekanal, 1999, Swami had materialized a clay model of Lord Buddha. And Buddha was keeping his hands on the navel, and there was a pot containing nectar called the Purnakumbam inside it. And then Swami explained to us the Kundalini process. Swami said how the energy which is there in the base of your spine from the Muladhara goes to Swadhisthana, then Manipurka. Manipurka, Swami said, is a very important center in your body which is close to your navel region. Swami said this is your subconscious mind where the impressions of all your previous lifetimes are stored in subtle form. Unless this Manipura chakra is pierced and you go above that, you will not be able to live your life in the center of love, that is your heart. You will not be able to reach the center of neck, which is your power. You will not be able to come to terms with the center between your bros, which is the Agya chakra, the center of peace. And be not be able to realize the center of bliss, which is Sahasrara. Swami said, ultimately, the purpose of human life is to 
is to express and experience the Brahmanandam which is there at the center of your head, on the top of your head. Unless you pierce the Manipurak Chakra, below that actually you are animal. From the navel region to the heart region, we are human. From the heart region upwards, we become divine. Ultimately, we become one with Brahma. We are able to realize only when we reach and pierce the Sahaswara, the center at the top of the head. At that very moment when I got up and saw my previous lifetimes, I understood very clearly that in the presence of Bhagwan, being in his physical presence that particular night had taken me beyond the Manipurak Chakra. That is why the subtle impressions of all my previous lifetimes were visible to me vividly as I see all of you seated here. This is what Swami is. This is what Swami can grant. This is the value of being in his presence. We pray to so many gods and goddesses. Swami says, His Shridi Sai Avatar. Of course, Shridi Sai and Parthi Sai both physically came to me in, in Delhi and partook fruits from me. But I'll tell you later when I came to Swami, I used to visit Shridi Baba temple every day. I was doing my ICWA finals and the institute was in Lodi Road was close to Shridi Baba temple. And I will leave my books at the desk and forget all about them. Then go to Shidi Baba temple and just shed tears of joy, looking at the devotees singing the various glories of Shidi Baba, offering fruits, flowers and fragrances, cloths and singing bhajans and artis. It was an amazing experience for me. I would spend nearly the entire day and parents would think I've gone to study to the college. Here I was sitting, spending my entire time with Shidi Baba and enjoying his presence. So when I finally got admission, and you know about it in the introduction that it took me six years time and that is an experience by itself. In 92 when I came for the second time as Sevadal, Swami was in Brindavan and Swami looked towards me in Darshan, Delhi boy, good boy and he gave Vibhuti. I was ecstatic for the first time Swami spoke to me and he gave me Vibhuti. Second Darshan, that very evening Swami looked towards me and said, hey Delhi boy, yes. Good boy, and gave vibhuti. Second time, how? Oh. <laughs> Twice morning and evening I got vibhuti from Swami. Next day morning darshan, Delhi boy, yes, sir. good boy, gave vibhuti. Then I got the courage enough to ask Swami what I wanted to ask him, and I said, Swami. At that time I was I was in the BCom on a second year in Delhi, in Delhi University, and then I said, Swami, Swami, I want MBA seat, Swami, in your university, and Swami said, Zarur, Zarur, Zarur. From a devotee, he took a letter, again looked back to me and said, Zarur, Zarur, Zarur. Six assurances, I thought, for one boon asked by me, I got it, I thought. I may not be able to complete my BCom honors in Delhi University, but I'll certainly get an MBA seat because Bhagwan gave me an assurance six times. Every time I applied, no reply. Every time I applied, no reply. I did my MCom and got the gold medal there to be able to just get a first division to be able to apply for Bhagwan's university. But apply, apply, no reply. 23rd November 94, I got a job. 23rd November morning, somebody gives me a call and says, hey, you had applied long back, you've been selected, please come and take your uh, letter of appointment. I said, wow, this is a gift from Swami, 23rd November. And I joined. Again, I kept applying, no reply. In 97, suddenly my application got accepted. And I came to Swami, and Swami came, uh, Swami was in Kode Canal, I went after my interview to Kode Canal, gave him my admit card, Swami took it away. And I thought I will be able to get the seat that particular year. And I did. And when I came to Swami, I asked him, Swami, in 92, mein aapko, aapne bola. Swami bola, che bar bola na, che saal mein mila na, this is the right time for you. <laughs> and then I realized, his planning works for the reason that when I finished my MBA with an outstanding grade, that year Swami started the PhD program after a gap of 11 years. Now, who can beat his planning? Because Swami knows exactly what to give you, how to give you, and what is the best time for it. In 97, when I came in 98, by Swami's grace, father joined as the editor of Sanatan Sarathi. But mother was living alone. In this particular experience, how we should pray to Swami, Swami explained to me very vividly, and I would like to share with you. In 99, still my mother was in Delhi, and she was staying alone. When she came to Swami, Swami called her and said, See, your is government job 
and she was a nursery teacher, awarded nursery teacher. Swami said, this is your government job. You must apply for retirement in a proper way, otherwise pension will be a problem. So father had already retired, he was getting his pension. He came off to Parthi immediately. Mother was living alone. The locality that we were staying was notorious for old, lonely women being murdered or looted and then people run away. And she was staying there alone in a building where there was nobody else. And I was so scared for my mom. And one day I took a letter and I told Swami, Swami, Swami said, what is, what is it? I said, Swami, letter, letter, mother, Swami. Swami said, ah, stamp, lagao, Delhi, bhejo. And said, Swami, letter is for you. And Swami asked, where am I? Now Swami is standing next to me, his robe is brushing against my nose and he is asking me, where am I? And naturally I say, Swami, you are everywhere. And Swami said, yes, that is true. But I truly live in the depths of your heart. I want you to pay attention to this particular response and conversation with Swami because it really opens a new vistas in our mind. And Swami said, yes, I am everywhere, but I truly live in the depths of your heart. The letter is still in my hands. And Swami said, whatever prayer you may have, whatever prayer you may have, leave it with me in the depths of your heart. Whatever prayer you may have, leave it with me in the depths of your heart. And then he said, if you ever have to pray, only pray, Samastha lokaha sukhino bhavantu. Samastha lokaha sukhino bhavantu. Samastha lokaha sukhino bhavantu. I was aghast by the reply. But Swami did not end there. He said, because I am only samastha lokaha. Samastha lokaha is my body. When you do the action of samastha lokaha sukhino bhavantu, if that is what your prayer is, I also respond with reaction and response of Sukhno Bhavantu, Sukhno Bhavantu. I also is, is a reaction and response from me also. When you say, Swami, Samastha Loka Sukhno Bhavantu, then I also react and respond naturally. Every action must have a reaction. When you say, Swami, Samastha Loka Sukhno Bhavantu, I also have a reaction and response. Sukhno Bhavantu, Sukhno Bhavantu. And Swami said, then I will answer your prayers in your heart in the best possible way at the best time. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. And that is why that very moment I made a resolve, Swami, there is no need to even ask you for anything. Swami says, I am a mother filled with thousand hearts of love for you. A little child who needs milk has to even cry for that milk sometimes. But Swami, does he need to be even asked when he's the resident of our own hearts? Does he not know what we need? Does he not know what to give us? Does he not know what is the best time to give it to us? He knows it all. And that is why if ever we have to pray for ourselves or for anyone, the best prayer is Samastha Lokaha Sukhino Bhavantu. Because in any form, in any name that you pray to him, he only is responding. Not just in India, across the globe. One day Swami came for darshans at 6.30 in the morning. The Kulwant Hall gate was locked. The lights were off. His interview room was closed. In the nick of time, the, the portico in charge came and opened the door for Swami for him to enter. 6.30 he went inside, crossing across the ladies' line and just without even putting on the lights, he just sat down there and then he told that person, call the research scholars. We were in a half bathed, half shaven po position. We all ran, with barefooted, we ran to Mandir and we entered the room one by one and Swami acknowledged our presence and then he closed his eyes again. I was sitting so close to Bhagwan. was he even breathing? There was no movement from him for 45 minutes time. Then Swami opened his eyes, acknowledged our presence, again closed his eyes. Nearly one hour passed. Then Swami opened his eyes, breathed again. You could see that distinct breathing of his chest again. And then Swami, very in a whispering tone, he asked, What date is today? I said, Swami, 6th of August. Then he said, What happened on this day? We had no idea what happened on this day. Nothing happened to us or around us. We, said, we just kept quiet. And then Swami himself said, this is the day 
that atom bomb was dropped on Hiroshima in Japan. And then Swami said, right now in Osaka, my children are praying to me with lighted candles that such a catastrophe and holocaust that we suffered, Swami, it should never happen again. And Swami made a, a matter-of-fact statement and said, I listened to their prayers and came. I listened to their prayers and came. Sisters and brothers, to which Chinese gods were the people in Japan praying to? Followers of Taoism, Confucianism and Shintoism, which we don't even have, not even have heard about. They have their own gods and goddesses and deities to whom they pray. But tell me, when collectively we pray with Samastha Loka Sukhano Bhavantu in our hearts, Swami has to respond. Swami has to respond. That Swami says, a proper study of mankind is man. Proper study of mankind is man. Somebody asked Swami, Swami used to repeat that so often, that the proper study of mankind is man. What is the meaning of that? And then Swami told this devotee and said, if you are going in the forest and a thorn pricks your feet, what will you do? He said, Swami, I will remove it with my hand. And Swami said, why should the hand go and help? The hand is separate from the feet, is it not? Why should the hand go and help? Why should the mouth cry? Why should the eyes tear? Why should the entire body come together and help the feet? He said, Swami, because the hand and face and the entire body, the eyes, they also feel the pain of the... They also feel, feel, feel the pain that the feet is undergoing. And Swami said, that is the proper study of mankind is man. When one part of society is suffering, when one part of society is languishing behind, when one part of society is undergoing difficulties, should not the remaining part of society come together and help? That is our innate, that is why Swami says, it is important for us to translate our action into Karma Yoga. Our action, our karma should become dharma. How will it become? It's a very simple process. It's a very simple process. In this andheri, what's the meaning of andheri actually? In Hindi, andheri means a dust storm that blinds you. And this dust storm of desires that is blinding us day in and day out, how in this dust storm, how will we be able to establish dharma shetra in our own hearts? We cannot leave our jobs, we cannot leave our households, we cannot leave our corporate offices, we cannot leave the organizations, we have to work. And how do we translate our action into karma yoga and make our karma into dharma, the dharma shetra be established in our own hearts? This process we have to think. Some boys were telling Swami one day and said, Swami, MBA course is so engrossing, so many core courses, so many electives, so many librarias, so many awareness classes, so many other responsibilities, so many projects, assignment, presentations. Swami, having come to Puttaparthi, there is no time to think about Swami. Having come to Puttaparthi and for Swami, Swami, there is no time to think about Swami. And Swami said, oh, you are so busy. You are so busy. And Swami said, after all that you are busy with, there are still 24 hours left. And boy was aghast and Swami, how, how is it possible, Swami? And Swami said, very simple, when you get up in the morning, offer the day to me. When you go for Supravatam, think of me. When you go to play, play from my team. When you go to study, think that you are studying Swami's subject and the teacher is Swami himself. When you go to Mandir, then you are with me. When you eat the food, feed me. Don't think you are feeding yourself, feed my mouth, not yours. When you go to sleep in the end, after study hours, put your head on Swami's lap and sleep and come back to me. Is it not that though you are so busy, 24 hours are still left to think about me. We should not separate Swami from us. Our brother when he was introducing, he said, we also get lost in the process of our worldly life. And we forget Swami and we feel Swami is only in our puja room or Swami is only in Dharma Chetra, Swami is only in our temple. It is not because Swami is in the depths of our heart. Let us never ever forget that. Swami is, He is the essence of our being and that is why Swami says, there are levels of human beings also. You have to judge yourself. Nobody will stand in judgment to yourself. There was one great devotee of Swami who was staying in the mandir. 
Swami called the entire family for an interview. He was a very scrupulous follower of Hindu customs. And Swami was talking about his son's marriage and Swami said, Haan, kya sadhana karta hai? Ah, he got the opportunity. He was waiting to tell this to Swami. And he started off, rantering. And Swami, 4 o'clock, Swami, I get up. Then after that, Swami, Subhrabhatman ke liye jata hai, Om Karam karta hai, uske baad mein Brahmarpanam karta hai, khana khata hai, Gram Seva, Narayan Seva, Medical Camp ke liye jata hai, Swami. Phir old people ke home mein jata hai, ye Seva karta hai, wo Seva karta hai, Sandhya Vandana bhi karta hai, Swami. Phir raat ko sone ke pehle, Hanuman Chalisa karta hai, Swami. Uske baad continue karta hai, Swami. Sab kuch karta hai, Swami. And Swami listened to him very patiently. And said, itna karta hai. Spirituality ki KG class mein kab tak rahega aise? He got a shock of his life. He was an old man. He spent his entire life in all these customs. And here was Swami telling him, ki spirituality ki KG class mein kab tak rahega aise? And he broke down and fell at Swami's feet and said, Swami, abhi mein kya karu? Pura zindagi toh beat gya KG class mein, abhi kaise? And Swami said, haa, nahi, tension lene ka zorot nahi hai. Tum preparation achha kiya hai. Main tumko BA, BA degree dega. डबल बीए डिग्री देगा बीए बीए बाबा के पास में आना है ना इस लाइफ के एंड में मैं तुमको बीए बीए डिग्री देगा पर मैं जो बोलूंगा वो करेगा करेगा स्वामी आप जो बोलेगा वो करेगा अच्छा देखो इंटरव्यू रूम के बाहर जाएगा ना तुमको कोई भी आदमी मिलेगा तुम सोचना कि ये बाबा ही है तुम सोचना कि ये बाबा ही है अच्छा स्वामी एक डॉग मिलेगा ना और डॉग से भी सोचना कि इसके अंदर में गॉड है सोचेगा सोचेगा स्वामी अच्छा क्लाउड आता है वो भी पावर ऑफ गॉड है अच्छा रोज ब्लॉसम होता है वो भी बाय द पावर ऑफ गॉड है बर्ड्स एंड एनिमल्स यू सी अराउंड दैट इज आल्सो गॉड इन देम इफ यू थिंक लाइक दिस इफ यू सी यूनिटी इन डाइवर्सिटी आई विल माई सेल्फ कम एंड ग्रांट यू द बी ए बी ए डिग्री एंड ब्रिंग यू बैक टू मी प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पोर्ट ऑफ वट स्वामी इज टेलिंग अस we have to move from diversity to unity and till we do that swami will keep on giving us circumstances where we'll be forced in everything that you see with form is there not a formless behind it you say a beautiful rose on an individual behind the rose if there is not the invisible fragrance and the indescribable beauty will we be able to understand rose in its completeness we have to go from form to formless all his 70 years of discoursing swami kept telling us i am not this form i am not this form one day we were having a conversation with swami and swami was sitting where his samadhi was samadhi is today and swami in the course of uh, talking about rama's departure from earth he told of us after a few years my samadhi will be here <gasps> We broke down in completeness and Swami said, Swami, never ever, how can we ever live? Swami said, I am not this body. I am not this mind. You perceive me only through that level, through that lens. But if the body has come, the body will go. But I will always be here. The body has come, the body will go, and, but I will always be here. And that is why the significance of Puttaparthi is so great. Because Swami in this Kali Yuga chose Puttaparthi as a place of his Leelas. He chose that circumstances to create, this, put the seeds of realization in all of our hearts. That air of Puttaparthi is what he has breathed. Every part of Puttaparthi is what Swami has built with his own hands. Every step he has himself walked. Every aspect of Puttaparthi he has himself taken care of. What better or more conducive place can there be than Puttaparthi for the blossoming of the seeds of realization in our hearts? That is why Puttaparthi is, has great significance. But Swami says, do not confine me to this particular body because I am beyond. And that is why Swami says, I also judge you and you must also judge yourself at your own level. What are the various levels that we, that we see in us and around us. Swami says, there are six different levels of an individual. Some individuals will look at you from what you possess. Kitna maal wala hai, kitna bada gaadi hai, kitna uncha bangla hai. Swami says, that is the lowest level of vision. That is the lowest animal level of vision. You can't go further down than that. 
But some people will look beyond that and say, he is young or old, good looking, smart looking, he has hair or he is half bald. You look at it at that level, at the bodily level, good looking, bad looking. Nami says, second level of, of vision. You are little better, but you are still quite worse, you are still at the animal level. And some people say, okay, what he has or what his body is like doesn't really matter. What is important is his mind, how he thinks, right? What is his way of thinking? Where is he oriented? That is the third level of looking of the vision. Some says beyond that, some people look, don't even at all these three levels, they look at your intelligence and say, whatever he may be way of thinking, but how intelligent he is, how he is able to discriminate between good and bad, right and wrong, how he is able to analyze every aspect and bring that in a succinct fashion in front of others, that intelligence actually is more important. Some says beyond that, some people have the vision of the emotional character of the individual and says, whatever be his intelligence, if he doesn't have control over his emotions, his intelligence will always be clouded. He will never be able to take right decisions. So what is more important is, emotionally, how much is he balanced? When we give him a tough task, does he cave in or does he come up to it? What is his EQ, emotional quotient? Some people have that vision of that. That is even deeper than that. And Swami said, beyond that is your character. Some people say, all this is not important. What essentially you are, what is your fundamental character, that is most important. Some people have even a deeper vision than that and they say, what is the character of this particular individual? That is more important. Swami said, there are only a few who will go beyond that and look at the same Atmic source which is there in you and that individual and say, all said and done, even that character is changing all the time. The real thing is that he has divinity within him as I have divinity within me. He and I are one. So sometimes we may have to judge ourselves and say, if I really want to go back to that one particular source, which is Bhagwan Baba, do I have that vision of unity or not? Am I only fluttering at the shallow levels of the body, mind, intelligence, emotions and character? Everything that changes and can be seen as changing is untruth. Swami says, discrimination is very important. Please remember, whatever you can see as changing is untruth. The body is changing, whatever we have possessions keep changing, the body keeps changing, the mind keeps changing, emotions keep changing, intelligence keeps changing, even before lunch and after lunch intelligence levels are different, <laughs> is it not? <laughs> emotions keep changing, even character keeps changing, just before the level of the Atma is the character. But just imagine a highway robber called Ratnakara became the Adi Kavi Valmiki and a Brahma Rishi called Va Vishwamitra he got embroiled with Menaka and he became a family, family uh, householder. Then what can you talk about the judgment of anybody else in terms of anything? You can only judge yourself. You can only judge yourself. And that is why let us always stand in judgment only to ourselves. One day in Kodekanal, one devotee of Bhagwan who had been with Swami for n number of years, she said, Swami, hum log itni sadhana karte hain Swami. But we are so far from the Lakshke, how do we know that Swami? We are talking in Kode Kanal and Swami asked in the evening, anybody has a question to ask? And she said, Swami, I have to ask a question. Swami, we do so much sadhana. I am reminded of the same devotee who told you know, from 4 to 8 in the night in the evening, I do sadhana. And Swami said, still in KG class. This lady is asking Swami, Swami, we do so much sadhana. How do we know that we are so far from the Lakshke, how far are we from the Lakshke? How far are we from the goal? Pat came Swami's reply. Ask yourself, apne se poocho. Ask yourself, how deep, expansive and selfless is your love? That is the level of your distance from God. How beautiful is it not? Swami said, ask yourself, don't ask me. <laughs> ask yourself. Today when you go to bed, let us all ask ourselves. Why only that devotee should ask? Why can't we ask? Because we also were the recipient of the same benefit that Swami gave in reply to this lady and Swami said, ask yourself, how deep is your love? We all say that, you know, we love so many people in our lives. But how deep is that love? Only skin deep? Little deep? Shallow love? No, then that is not true love we are talking about. How expansive is that love? Or is my love very narrow? 
I like this aspect of your, yours personality, but this aspect I will hate. Why? Because I don't like it. If you mold yourself in this particular way, then I have a chance of liking you. Otherwise, no, no chance. Then that means what? My love is not expansive, it is narrow. And how selfless is my love? Is it? And Swami says, your love should be as selfless as a love of a thousand mothers. Your love should be as deep as the ocean, as expansive as the sky, and as selfless like the selfless love of a thousand mothers put together. We are talking about that pristine nature of love. We all say that we love Swami. In one discourse, Swami was talking to all the devotees and said, you all say that you are great devotees. Tell me who will come and drink the cup of poison like Mirabai did. Anybody is there? Volunteer. Come, I'll give you a cup of poison. Is anybody will drink? Everybody was quiet. Who like Pralada will jump off the mountain <laughs> and say, I believe in Lord Narayana and he will protect me. Is there that level of faith in us? But there is possibility. That is why Samarpan is what we require. And Samarpan is the key to all the ills that and lacuna that we have in our spiritual life. I'll tell you one beautiful experience that expresses really in practical way what is the meaning of that surrender. And that surrender is so amazing because it releases us from everything else. Try to imagine that a wave for one second experiences itself as the ocean. Does it have any wave karma left for it? No. Just imagine for a few seconds that air in the balloon experiences itself as the all-encompassing air, even for a few fraction of a second. Does it have any balloon karma left for it? No. Just imagine that a streak of rainbow for one second experiences itself as the all-pervading light. Is there a rainbow karma left for it? No. So the release, the meaning of surrender is experiencing myself even for a fraction of a second that I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not the intelligence, I am not the emotions and character, I am one with Swami. Experience matter. Explanation and theoretical understanding does not matter. You can listen to all the Upanishads, you can listen to a million Samarpan talks, Unless we are really samarpit, the aspects of spirituality, to find out the reality within us, till that time transformation will not come about. Let me give you an extreme example, which you should not emulate in your lives. Please, I will never try to emulate it, you also should not, but I'll tell you your practical example. It was in Kodekanal that we were uh, sitting and there was one devotee from Tamil Nadu, who would always talk about Samarpan to Swami. He will talk, always talk about surrender to Swami. If Swami. He will speak, he will only talk about surrender. And then Swami was telling about him and what a great devotee he is. He is no more now, but Swami was really loved him a great deal because of his level of surrender. At that time, our All India President Sir, Srinivasan Sir was there with us. He has now merged in Swami. And he was telling about one instance in relation to this devotee. At one time, Swami gave his Mercedes-Benz car to this devotee and said, Ishwarama day is coming, go to Coimbatore and buy some dhotis and saris for distribution purpose. So he took the, it has Swami's command, took the keys and was about to go. But this devotee cannot see from one eye, other eye is blur, his hands keep shaking, he's an old man. And the All India President thought, this fellow, how will he be able to drive down to Coimbatore, get all this luggage and be able to manage to come back in time? Let me send one, you know, young Sevadal with him. So he chose one Sevadal who knew Commodore and said, you go along with this devotee and make sure you all come back safely and soundly. So they were going down the hill. It was a Saturday evening and a lot of traffic was coming up to Kode Canal. But the way this devotee was driving Swami's car was amazing to this Sevadal. He was driving so fast like a Ferrari. And he would, you know, at great speed and so much control that this Sevadal was aghast and amazed and he said, Sir, what driving? Amazing! I could never imagine that a person like you who can't see from one eye, one eye is blurred, hands keep shaking all the time, you're not able to, you walk so slowly, but the way you are driving is amazing. 
At that very moment, just before a U-pin bend, this devotee left the steering wheel and looked towards him and said, Who is driving? This Sevadal started shuddering and sweating and said, His time for merging in Swami had come. And said, Swami, you have to bring me back to you in this particular way with this madman. I am coming to you, Swami. Just ahead of us is a valley and we are, we are just about to come. Swami, please forgive me all my sins. I am coming to you. But unimaginably, just before the U-turn bend, the car slowed down. It turned by itself, speeded up. The next U-turn bend, it slowed down, took the turn, speeded by itself. This person again put his hand on the steering wheel and said, without looking forward, and said, Now you understand. Now do you understand? One MBA boy, when he was sitting, MBA boys got an <clears throat> exit interview one, one time. And they were all leaving for the corporate world. And one boy was very worried about his uh, job and everything else and his, his corporate career. He told Swami, 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 job kaise milega? Swami, kaise hoga? Swami, kahan pe interview dena hai? Swami, mujhe bohat tension ho raha hai. <laughs> Swami put his hand on his shoulder and said, Hey, relax, relax, relax. From the interview room, Swami showed him outside the Kulwant Hall, a, a hill which is far beyond. And Swami said, Oh, dekho, wo hill mein dekhta hai? Wo hill mein kya hai, batao? Swami, kya hai? Kuch ped paude hai? Aray, so, bohat sara insects bhi hai. Haan, Swami. Snakes, scorpions, ants, lot of things may be there, Swami. And Swami said, grass is there, trees are there. He said, yes, Swami, all of these things are there. And Swami said, for millions of years, who do you think is taking care of everything on that hill? For millions of years, everybody has been provided with food, shelter, accommodation, everything has been provided for, everybody is living there happily, even birds are chirping, animals are moving around happily. Who has been taking care of all of them for a million years? And Swami, you only are taking care. And Swami said, it's a tension kyon leta hai? You are the best of my creation. If I am taking care of even the, the smallest of the beings on that hill for a million of years and like that the entire universe, you are the best of my creation. Why do you think I will not take care of you? Bata. He had no answer. He fell on it, Swami. Swami, <laughs> apologies and thank you very much for the assurance. So why do we ever doubt? Doubt should never come to our mind because Swami is always there with us. I'll tell you one small instance. When I was in college, I started doing meditation. And one day, because of seeing all those horror movies and you know, these things and all that, suddenly one day I got some dreams of some evil looking beings, witches and ghosts. So I got up in the morning and night and I, 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 and then I said, Swami, my dream mein ghosts are coming, Swami. I'm very scared to sleep now. So I, the whole night I kept chanting Swamis and Hanuman Chalisa. Next day, I was fine, went to college. When I came back again, night time I started getting very scared. I said, Swami, if you have a dream mein ghost, I'm very scared. Swami, please take care. So I prayed to him and I, then I slept. I am seeing that I am seeing from the window of one particular room which has got two attached rooms to it, left and the right. They have no doors between them. Three rooms, only one window from which I am seeing inside. On the left side, there is nobody there in that room, not even any furniture, nothing is there. But slowly and steadily, out of thin air, a halo of black hair and orange robes start materializing. And when Swami comes to the middle room, he is flesh and blood. He looks towards me, assures me and goes to the third room and starts dissolving into thin air like he had appeared. When I got up that particular morning, I was so self-confident and I thought, Swami, there is never a period of time, there is never an occasion where you will not be there with me. So what if I am not able to see you and perceive you in physical form at any point in time, but you have given me today the assurance that you will always, always, always there with me. Thank you, Swami, for that wonderful insurance. So that is why we have to, sisters and brothers, always realize that Swami is there with us at every moment of time in our hearts, in us, around us, with us, within, within us. Wherever we need Him, He is always there. He says, you, you need me, you deserve me. But our single-minded focus should be on Him. We should always remember, Jab hum dekhte hain, to kya dekhte hain. We have to see the Swami inside of all of us when we look at anything in our creation. 
And that love, that vision of unity is a transformative experience. There's one devotee of Swami, he was one day coming in the New York suburban train. Suddenly a black man with a big knife came and he started asking for money and the gold jewelry of the people sitting in the compartment. Everybody got scared and started giving their money and jewelry to this person because they were very scared him holding a big knife. But Mr. Hall Honick, a devotee of Swami, sitting towards the end, was watching all this and said, Swami, behind this cruel gestures, threatening gestures and cruel face, is certainly you only. Beyond this body, mind, intelligence, character, Swami, you only exist. I am going to talk to only to you, Swami. And this man came with a showing a knife. And Swami's devotee said, Brother, I will give you whatever you want, but you seem so hungry and famished. Would you just care to have this sandwich and then leave? Would you imagine that total person's personality transformed? He became mellowed, he sat down, kept his knife in the corner, ate those sandwiches, and then only after saying thank you, went on to his way. If we want transformation to come about in this world, we have to first have faith in Swami and understand that Swami is always with us. At one time when I was in Delhi in college, suddenly when we were going to a, a marketplace, I was asking my dad again and again, Dad, what bus ka number kya hai? Nazar nahi aara hai se. And dad said, market nahi jana hai, operation ke paas chal. Tera to aankhe kharaab ho gai hai. Minus 1.5, the first eyeglasses. After nearly a month's time, again cannot see, minus 2.5. And I prayed to Swami, Swami, ye kya kar rahe ho? I'm still young, 3.5 means soda glasses all my life. Please, Swami, protect me. That very night, Swami came into my dream. Swami, in a very good way, he is standing in a very good way, and the God of God's face is looking glorious. He is young, with you know, the marks of beetle leaves, red lips are red, and Swami is looking amazingly glorious. And I am waving the camphor at him. I am giving Aarti to Swami. My mother is next to me. And after the Aarti is over, Swami blows air from his mouth, which enters my eyes. And I tell Swami, see, Mami, dekha aapne? Baba ne mari aankhon ko sahi kar diya. Baba ne mari aankhon ko cure kar diya. My number will not go up hereafter. And believe me, today my number is lesser than what it was. And it has not deteriorated. If you un try to understand what, how Swami manages our waking dream and the deep sleep states, we'll have a better idea of who Swami is. Because when we have dropped our bodies in our sleep state, the mind is given the conviction of curing a one part of the body and it's able to do it. Similarly, just imagine if you are able to drop even our minds and intellects and character from our own selves and look at the wit like a witness consciousness to the whole world, we can transform the world. This is what Swami has always told us, that if you realize who you really are, it does not matter which path you follow to Swami, every path are the, exactly the same. In, in the Shara time, one year, Swami was giving discourses every day. First day Swami gave a discourse about the path of karma. And Swami said, many of your previous lifetimes impacts remain embedded in your feet like thorns. They don't allow you to walk fast enough. So I'm going to, it is the best way for you to do good actions. Remove these particular thorns and walk on the spiritual path. The next day Swami gave a discourse and said, Whichever action you do, you are doing with some kind of body consciousness, with egoism in your hearts. And that is why the good actions will bind you with a golden chain, the bad actions will bind you with an iron chain. Both will bind you. And he said the best way on the spiritual path in Kali Yuga is that of Bhakti. He gave the examples of Mirabai, Radha, Gauranga, <clears throat> various saints and sages, Tukaram. And he said, see, by the following of the path of Bhakti, you can burn all that binds you and become free. And the third day Swami gave a discourse and said, if walking on the path of karma is like walking on to, to the road of destination and the path of bhakti is like going in a car, it is a path of jnana that takes you by flight to your destination. That is why you always say, aham brahmasmi tattva masi, so hum. You are not different from God. That is what you must realize. So I was confused. I said, Swami, how can the path of karma be the best? The path of bhakti also can be the best. And bath of jnana also can be the best. How is it possible? We had gone to the interview room for picking up the uh, boxes of sweets for distribution purposes. And I was holding two boxes. I was really sweating because it was summer's time. And Swami said, hey, 
why do you take two boxes? Take one by one. If you want to take two boxes, take somebody's help. So I kept both the boxes down and sat and said, Swami, last few days you have declared the path of karma, the path of bhakti, and also the path of jnana as the highest path. Swami, which actually is the best path? So I sat down and Swami said, hmm, better, better. Have you ever seen a ladder? I was surprised where I'm talking about the path to spirituality and Swami is telling about have you ever seen a ladder? In childhood, as my book will tell you, I was so naughty, I used to fall down from ladders, I used to jump from places, I used to be always a wounded man and I, had, I really knew ladders very well. <laughs> and I said, Swami, yes, I've seen ladders, I've climbed and fallen from ladders also. And Swami said, ha ha, theek hai, how is a ladder made? I said, Swami, two big poles on the sides and the smaller ones to go up and come down. And Swami said, yes, exactly. The two big poles on the sides are the path of bhakti and jnana. But you must keep your feet on the rungs of karma and climb up. And Swami said, don't worry. Whichever path you follow in your life, the other two will be added on to you. And Swami gave an example. He said, do you know about uh, Swami Vivekanand? I said, yes, Swami. What path did he follow? I said, Swami, a karma yogi. He always talked about karma, action. And Swami said, he was also a great jnani. But which path Ramakrishna Paramahansa followed? I said, Swami, he was a great bhakta. And Swami said, why did he, with all the jnanis, come to him for clarifications? Then what about Shankaracharya? Swami, a great jnani. Then why did he write treaties on Bhajgovindam and Sandhari Lahari, which are treaties on devotion? And Swami said, the saints and sages who are following the path of jnana, and staying in the deep caves and in the Himalayan caves and the deep forests, it is because of their prayers of Samastha Loka Sukhuno Bhavantu that the earth stands in its place. It's a very good action. And he said, whichever path you follow, it does not matter. Whatever your inclination is. Some of us really have the inclination to follow the path of karma. We all want to be in action. You give us some particular job, we'll put on the scars, we'll go ahead and do the service. We love it. That is our inclination, that is our path. Some people don't, are not very keen on that. They say, bhajan mein bitha dije, bhajan karenge, naam smaran karenge, aarti karenge. That is what really pleases us. That is your inclination. Some people say that let us always feel that we and Swami are one. Let us look at the treaties on, on, on oneness and jnanam. And they always will talk about that. That is their path. Some people follow the eightfold path. That is their path. Swami says, it does not matter which path you follow. Whichever path you follow, the other path will automatically be added on to you. Added on to you. So let us move forward on the spiritual path with this understanding. First of all, who is Swami? Swami is the Sarva Devata Sarupa Sampanna Purna Avatar Bhagwan. He is the Purna Avatar. He is the embodiment of love. Whichever form you pray, whichever name you take, it reaches Him only. <coughs> In 2003, after we finished our Gram Seva, Swami said, you must talk about the Gram Seva in, in the cycle one thought. And he made a team of six people and he said, you must talk in conversational form. Now that was difficult for me. Why? Because you have to remember the exact closing sentence of the previous person and then speak exactly the same sentence. You must end in the same way. Then he must start. Even one day before the actual performance, I forgot my lines. Everybody was tensed, including our Vice Chancellor. Because we were having the rehearsals in Poonu Chandra. And everybody thought, if Deepak forgets his lines tomorrow, it's gone. Swami will be very unhappy with all of us. So post-dinner, our uh, hostel is very close to the Hillview Stadium, where we have a 65-feet Lord Hanuman. And I told Hanuman, Hanuman ji, this is not my desire for you. You have to do my desire for you. You have to do my desire for me. But if you do my desire for me, अगर मेरा कल प्रोग्राम में मैं लाइंस नहीं भूलता हूं अपनी तो मेरा आपसे वादा रहा कि अगले एक हफ्ते तक रोज हनुमान के ऊपर मैं आके प्रदक्षिणा करूंगा ये मेरा वादा रहा आई विल कम एवरी डे टू द हिल टॉप ऑफ द हिल एंड डू सरकम एम्बुलेशन फॉर द नेक्स्ट वन वीक्स टाइम नेक्स्ट डे आवर प्रोग्राम वेंट ऑफ वेरी वेल स्वामी वॉज एक्सट्रीमली हैप्पी ही गेव ग्रुप फोटोग्राफ ही केप्ट हिज हैंड और आर हेड्स वन बाय वन ऑल्सो सेवन डेज वर ओवर द नेक्स्ट डे आई स्टार्टेड डूइंग माई सरकम एम्बुलेशन सात दिन बीत गए सेवंथ डे आफ्टर आई फिनिश माई सर्कम एम्बुलेशन आई वॉज लुकिंग टूवर्ड स्वामीज रेजिडेंस एंड थिंकिंग स्वामी 
you manage the entire universe you create sustain and destroy universes this small mortal who has done his prayers here i am sure you will not even be aware of it it's too insignificant for you to be even aware of and i don't know where my prayers have gone they have gone to kailasha brahma loka or narayan loka vaikuntha or they have gone to this idol of hanuman this hanuman is actually made of cement and steel actually maybe you it is in some other plane of existence so i leave it all kya farak padta hai i had promised i will come for 7 days i came for 7 days mamla khatam hua debit credit balance ho gaya hamara accounts abhi mujhe aur kuch guilty feeling nahi hai ki maine nahi kiya kar diya so 7 days i have come and done my and followed my promise as a chol chalte hain it was getting late for the college that time college used to be at 8:30 in the morning i'm getting already it's already 8 o'clock so in my track suits i started coming down the police chief sirens which used to follow swami's car wherever he would go out of the mandir i heard that particular siren that very moment there some devotee who was not well he was in super hospital so i was daily going to have a look and and bless him and see him maybe see him off i thought maybe swami is going to the hospital as regular so i came little more down then i saw that swami is entering the hillview stadium theek hai swami kai bar shanti vedika ka ek round laake chale jate hain wapas आ रहे होंगे मुझे से क्या फर्क पड़ता है आई स्टिल केप कमिंग डाउन वेन आई रीच समवेयर वेयर लॉर्ड शिवा स्टैचू इज देर इन द हिलव्यू स्टेडियम एट दैट टाइम आई सॉ स्वामी इज कमिंग अप द हिल एंड आई एम आई हैव नो वे टू एस्केप नो दिस ओनली वन पास टू गो अप एंड डाउन एंड आई सेड अभी तो फंसे स्वामी विल लुक एट मी इन दिस ट्रैक सूट एट दिस टाइम पास्ट एट ओ क्लॉक एंड विद नो बडी एल्स अराउंड इज स्वामी विल श्योरली आस्मी क्या कर रहा है यहाँ पे वट आर यू डूइंग नो कॉलेज फॉर यू वॉट and that when you are specially swami speaking to you on a regular basis you are very scared of going out of form so i hid myself there's a stone there so i hid myself behind the stone hoping swami will not look at me swami's car came indulal shah ji was along with swami in the car in the car stopped swami's window went down swami was looking so serious my heart missed a beat and swami with his finger called me here like this maine kaha aaj to gaya aa to jhad padni hai swami called me जर क्या करता है इन टाइम्स ऑफ क्राइसिस ट्रूथ कम्स आउट जर स्वामी हनुमान को प्रदक्षिणा करने के लिए आया था इन अ वेरी अपोलोजेटिक टोन सर्नली स्वामी कॉन्ट्रोल्स चेंज एंड बिकेम वेरी हैप्पी एंड सेट वेरी 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 हैप्पी एंड द विंडो पेन वेंट अप फ्रॉम देयर इट सेल्फ स्वामी टर्न द कार बैक एंड वेंट बैक टू द मंदिर एंड आई वॉज सरप्राइज हैविंग कम अप टू लॉर्ड शिवा हाफ द वे स्वामी एक्चुअली कूड हैव गॉन अप टू हनुमान एंड देन कम बैक but from that point itself swami turned the car and went back i said okay anyway swami is well what is me to lose now i'm getting late for college let me go get ready and go <clears throat> evening he called three of us research scholars with the vice chancellor talking to the vice chancellor for some time in the middle of a conversation looked towards me and said hey deepak tere ko hanuman pasand hai kya do you like hanuman ha pasand hai swami ah idhar aa idhar he waved his hand and materialized the chain with a pendant of the exact replica of hanuman on the hill top he called me close i put my elbows on his knees i bent forward my hair touching his chest and then swami started locking up that you know the chain behind my back and whispered into my ears hey ni prayers vachindira hey your prayers reach me i really wish those moments would never end i really wish those moments will never end who is bhagwan baba what is his nature what is our relationship with him what does he expect from us let us never forget that what he can grant us nobody else can ever do that he is the one and only sometimes swami will shake our faiths sometimes swami will show us glimpses of a path which is not the direct path to him our karmic balances will take us on the wrong word path but they also lead to him only but in a roundabout way you may take another few lakhs and thousands and millions of years for him his time is eternity it doesn't matter for him even if you take a million attempts to pass his examination he still be patient and say theek hai take your time but it is up to us to be able to have that one pointed single minded devotion to him and say swami only you 
I'm going to see only you. I'm only going to see, follow the path that you have shown to me. And then he will grant. If we sincerely, if we ask for whatever we may ask for, he will grant it. I'll tell you one small example that happened in Kodekanal. We were all as part of serving team. We were all there. Myself, one teacher and few students were there. And we were serving. All the students were having a lunch session. So at that time, um, uh, Swami was having a small bowl with some uh, white peas, salted boiled white peas. And he was having them with his silver, small silver spoon. <laughs> you would have seen, Mr. Sir, number of occasions in Kode Canal. So um, as we were standing there and all the boys were eating, and Swami was, you know, walking with his orange towel on his shoulder and having, taking his bowl along with him with a spoon and having one by one these, you know, white peas. Kabuli chana, as we call it. Then at that time I remembered when Swami had gone to Ramana Ashram and then blessed Ramana and then Swami had asked him, Ramana, you have all these samadhis of your cow, of your peacock, of your monkey, your own mother, where is your samadhi? And he said, Swami, ye shariri mera samadhi hai. And Swami was very happy and said, Ramana, bol, kya chahiye? He said, Swami, ek hi hai, aap ko khana parosta hun, kuch bachega to mein khaunga, mujhe poon moksh mil jayega, Swami. You partake the food that I serve you, Swami. Whatever remains as the leftovers, if I partake that, I will get Puna Moksha, Swami. I will be able to get the final realization. Swami said, okay. And Swami left some food for him in, his, in, in the plate and he partook of that. Swami's bowl was full of these white peas. And I was started thinking, Swami, your bowl is full. One spoon is full of your bowl. We can also get the Puna Moksha. You will not imagine, that very moment Swami turned back and looked towards me. <laughs> my heart stopped. And I said, Swami, no, 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 I don't take it seriously. No matter what. Where is Ramana and where is Ham? Shama kariye Swami. Itna... Swami looked over me very sharply, strictly. I said, Swami, no, don't take it seriously. Thik hai, you continue to walk. But he started walking towards me. And my heart was beating in and out of my body. And I became very serious with, you know, my ears and uh, becoming red and I was sweating. I said, Swami, it's okay. <laughs> I take my words back. Don't look so serious towards me. He came straight towards me, took a spoonful of white peas and offered them to me. Immediately I had it. Without losing even a single second. M maybe there is moksha in it. <laughs> How do you know? And he gave to all the other four people who were along, three boys and one teacher. And he again turned back and started walking in the ale. After having this, I thought, Swami, I had asked them. I had to get moksh from all of them. I didn't want to get any special moksh. I didn't want to get anything special for me. And just imagine how Swami, you know, with children, he is a child. Right? He listens to even the smallest of our prayers. He knows that we may be undeserving for it. But his nature is to grant without consideration. And Swami took a spoonful, showed like that, he's walking away from me, and he throws that spoonful of white peas towards his face, which touch all over his face, face and fall down on the ground. Immediately, I go on my knees, looking for white peas rolling out of his robe one by one. He is continuing to walk. He did not crush even a single white pea. He continued to walk. Those six, seven white peas kept rolling and coming out of his robe from behind one by one and I am going on eating one, one, one like that. <laughs> this is our Swami. This is our Mother Sai. Who doesn't look at any deservedness. Who doesn't look at any criteria. He says, if you love me, I will grant it to you. He takes upon himself any number of pain and sufferings to grant us what we seek from him if we seek sincerely. The best thing is what? To say, Swami, that you be in the depths of my heart. I leave all my prayers there. You know what to give, when to give and how best to give it. Swami, I surrender on to you. Let me have that complete samarpan to you. And when we do that, Swami takes care of everything in our lives, everything in our lives. One day our MBA results were about to be declared. Finally, our MBA results declaration means very tense period for all of us, especially those whom Swami is talking to. Swami will come and declare the results himself. 
and if you have not got an O or an outstanding grade, that means in Swami's parlance you have failed. Outstanding grade, five, four point five out of five or above is Swami's criteria. You passing. If you have less than O grade, you have failed. And where we would study so much, the whole focus will be on Swami. But that particular day, registrar had gone inside, and we, when Swami came out, we knew he had some of our results to declare publicly. That means publicly scolding also will come for many of the boys. I was very scared, trying to hide behind. Swami looked for me, called me, and I go forward, and uh, he is looking very seriously. And then he asked. Examiner asked now, how do you write the examinations? Now what do I say? If I say I wrote it well, then he'll say, this is the writing of the well, you didn't get an O grade, fail, you failed. If I say, I have not written well, then he'll say, why did you not write well? You should have written well, you don't, you are very careless boy. Both the times the chance of going out of form. So it's best in these times when there's divine uh, danger is there, keep quiet. Think hundred times, don't speak anything. So I kept quiet in an eerie silence. Let him only say what he wants to say. And Swami said, Ah, Niku, O oh great Vachindi, you got O oh great. Take Pad Namaskar. Ah, breath came back to my chest and I said, Oh, thank you, Swami. Took Namaskar. Swami kept his hand on my head. The time I had risen up, Swami materialized Vibhuti and gave it to me. But when I touched Swami's feet, his feet were burning with fever. Looked up to Swami's eyes and I saw that Swami's eyes were a little red. His voice a little hoarse. And all my joy of getting an ogre disappeared in no time at all. And I said, Swami, Swami has fever. Swami has taken upon himself somebody's suffering. This aspect of Swami, which we don't know about, we must understand. Innumerable times Swami takes upon himself the suffering that we are supposed to bear and silently suffers in silence. And I said, Swami, you have taken somebody's suffering upon yourself. Swami said, no, I am, I am absolutely fine. You go and sit. I said, Swami, I will not go and sit. Please tell me. On whose behalf you are suffering? Only in one in a million times would Swami reveal something like this. Otherwise, He would never reveal. If you ask a mother that you suffered for your child, the mother sees herself in the child. It is self-service for her. It is not service to somebody else. The child is a part of the mother's being. The mother never feels that there is there's separateness between me and my child. And when she serves the child, it is like serving herself. So Swami would never reveal that He suffers for us. But that one occasion, Swami chose to reveal and said, What could I have done? Boy, yesterday, a Muslim mother came with her child, six months old, with a hole in his heart. And the child is dying. She went to many hospitals seeking succor and operation for the child. But everywhere she was shunted out saying, the operation is very difficult and it requires a lot of money. The doctors came to me yesterday and said, Swami, this is an emergency. The child is very sick. If we have to operate, we have to operate immediately. And I said, I told the doctors to immediately arrange for the operation. And today morning, the operation was done. And then Swami said, that child could never have borne the operation of six long hours with a team of doctors. I took upon the suffering of the child on myself. And then Swami gave a very beautiful smile, very beautiful smile and said, but I am so happy the child is healthy and the mother is happy. But I am so happy. I can never forget that smile of Swami. When in excruciating pain, when in fever, he smiles and says, I am very happy that I have used my body for the sake of somebody else's benefit. That is, that mother would be praying and thanking his, her Allah what does it matter for Swami? That you are praying to Japanese and Chinese gods or to Allah or any other Christ. Because if there is a sincere prayer from the heart, Swami will certainly respond. Swami says, I am like the PT master. 
I do and show and then explain to you. In the year 1999 itself, there was an introduction into the convocation drama, which was the Burra Katha. <clears throat> In the Burra Katha, the actors and the dancers are supposed to sing and act and dance together at the same time. So some of the singers were chosen for this particular role, but they were supposed to put their hands on their waist and dance and sing along with that. Something from the epics and the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. But whenever the, the problem was, whenever they will start dancing, they will forget their singing. And when they start singing, they forget their steps. At that time, Swami was having a hip fracture. He was in excruciating pain. So we were all, uh, as I told you, Swami was calling us in the afternoon times for the three sessions and he was giving us opportunity. Swami would sit on the jhula and we would all surround him, swing his jhula or have meals with Swami. At that time, Swami called these Burakatha boys for a rehearsal. And Swami asked them to perform their particular lines. But as they started singing, they forgot their steps. At that time, I was sitting next to Swami doing service to his feet. Swami immediately put his hand in front. And I held his hand. Swami took support of my hand and then he got up. I was wondering, is the session over? Is Swami going back? What actually happened? Is Swami displeased with their dancing uh, steps being missed? At that very moment, Swami said, go a little back. And with that broken hip, Swami put his hand on his waist and started dancing. With those broken hips, where he could not take a single step comfortably, he needed support. And Swami started dancing. We broke down and said, Swami, please don't go through. And Swami said, it is my responsibility, sir. It is my responsibility. When somebody asked Swami, Swami, grant us devotion. Swami said, it is, if I grant somebody the highest boon of devotion, it will be partiality. I don't grant devotion to anybody. But I create conducive circumstances where the seeds of devotion can sprout and one devotee must give devotion to another. In Kodekanal, we had a debate. What is more important, individual or society? We debated a lot. After that, there was no conclusion. And we asked Swami, Swami, what is your decision, Swami? What is more important, individual or society? Swami said, of course, individual. I was on societal side. So I said, Swami, but you have made such massive Satisai Seva organizations. You have made water projects. You have made hospitals and universities. Is it not for society? And Swami said, that is to give a large number of individuals a chance and conducive environment to come back to me. But my relationship with each individual is one-to-one, heart-to-heart. -one, -heart. How beautiful. That is why our relationship with Swami is one-to-one, heart-to-heart. -one, These organizations are what? They are the limbs of Swami through which we can connect to Swami. Never ever, whoever may tell you anything, never ever take a step away from Satyasai Seva organizations. There is a great difference between ascent and descend. <laughs> Always remember that. Some people by their spiritual practices, by certain amount of you know, punyas that they may have earned, may get some small siddhis. They may be not zero watt bulbs like us, they may be 25 watt bulbs or 50 watt bulbs. Right? Doesn't mean that we have to look up to them in a way as if they are godly. No. God is only the generator of all the energies by which every bulb in this universe burns. There is a great difference between a small, a person, individual, getting a small power to exhibit something which we don't comprehend well. And Bhagwan Baba, who is the creator of the entire universe and sustains, and sustains and destroys it. There is a very big difference between the ascent of a man to a slightly higher level and the descent of God in human form. A wave can become a bigger wave and become something to look upon for a smaller wave. But it is not the ocean. It is not the ocean. That is why we must always remember the difference between where we really want to go at the end of our lives. My only quest is that Swami, at the end of my life, you must come and receive me. I don't want to look... Some people ask, what about Prima Sai Baba? When is he coming? I said, let him come and go. I am not bothered about Prima Sai Baba. Why? For me, Satsasai Baba is enough. 
if from this particular ocean indian ocean if i have gone to one part of the ocean and not been able to drink enough to quench my thirst to go to some other part of the ocean and to be able to quench my thirst is an is a foolish endeavor yes shirdi sai baba satya sai baba prem sai baba are essentially one but for me it is enough that i understand satya sai baba's oneness with me and i should be able to reach the the goal that i comprehend for me in oneness with him that is enough for me in this lifetime that is why single minded focus one name and one form many times we feel disconnected with swami in our daily life swami says it is very simple to connect with me and one day he explained to me the entire process he said take a form of swami that you like very much very simple process take a form of swami that you like very much see it between your eyebrows see it between in the forehead between your eyebrows then he said close your eyes after looking at the form close your eyes and see that particular form with the eye of your mind from the feet to the head and from the head to the feet you make that form embed that particular form in your forehead then you imagine see the flame of love in your heart take that flame of love and infuse it into my form i will become alive inside you practice this make me alive inside you i will speak to you i will respond to you i will talk to you i will take care of you you will have an individual swami with you all the time can any other god confer this boon on us he says i will give myself to you only do this small practice take my form see it inside with the eye of your mind and infuse the love in your heart into it and i will become alive inside you you will have an individualized satya sai baba with you all the time who can confer such boons upon us except our own bhagwan baba how much time do we have in the end in the end let us try and recapitulate what we have discussed today and with that i will end we are not different from god essentially when we see we must see beyond the possessions body mind intelligence emotions and character and look at the reality that is within all of us the entire creation is but the reflection of the creator that is the first thing that we have to understand second what is the nature of god pure love how can we reach him pure love one day swami came to us and asked <clears throat> boys what do you want one msc uh, mathematics boy suddenly he said swami i want to merge in you swami said open his arms said come 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 welcome come he had he did not know what to do and swami said ah you want to come back to me first be like me and i am only love first be like me and i am only love if you really have to go back to him you have to understand the meaning of love which is deep like the ocean expansive like the sky and selfless like that of a thousand mothers selfless love that love will take us back to swami swami is the embodiment of all gods and goddesses it does not matter which name or form even if it is japanese devotees in osaka praying to him if we congregate together and pray to swami for samasta loka sukuno bhavantu which is the highest prayer swami has said then swami will certainly respond that day swami said today we may be talking about threats of a nuclear holocaust once again but that moment swami gave me the assurance swami said i listened to their prayers and came and that is why if we have to save this world if we have to save our society from all the ills of the environment and the nuclear holocaust we must pray collectively and say swami let us connect back to you because swami himself has said satya sai seva organizations are my own limbs let us always remain connected to swami's limbs never ever walk away anybody anybody would say let us choose the highway swami has given to us of loving all and serving all helping ever and hurting never and in that respect 
I would like to end with one small experience which is the title of my book also, Love Smile Now. What is the next step forward after all this? How do we implement whatever we have heard today in our practical life tomorrow onwards? How can we do it? There was one boy who went for with his birthday plate. All the boys who have their birthday can go to forward and get blessings from Bhagwan. And this boy also went. <clears throat> and then Swami said, what do you want boy? He said, Swami, give me a mantra, a spiritual mantra. Swami said, I've already given the mantra, love all and serve all, help her and hurt never. There's no greater mantra than that. And Swami, I'm a Brahmin boy. My father told me, get a secret mantra from Swami. And Swami said, what secret? If Arjuna says, Bhagavad Gita is secretly given to me, I will not share. How will it, the whole society benefit? It is no secret, but I'll tell you a, a spiritual mantra. You, you must follow that. He said, yes, Swami, please give me. And Swami said, the mantra is, Lavu, Navu, Navu. In English, it means love, means love. And we all understood today the meaning of that love that Swami is talking about. True love. Smile. Truly smile. Have, Swami says spirituality is not for castor oil faces. If you would truly will love, you will automatically smile. And Swami said, now, in the present moment. In the present moment, truly love and smile. You will be in the spiritual goal of life. This is the practical secret formula that Swami gave. After so many years of listening to Swami's discourses, reading so many books, understanding, trying to imbibe what Swami has told, I did not find an easier formula to self-evaluate myself. Am I in the spiritual goal? Am I living spirit today's spirituality or not? This moment, am I truly loving and am I truly smiling or not? Basically meaning that every negative person, negative circumstance also that you come across, you must learn to love. It is not easy. But once we focus upon the learnings therefrom, if I meet a negative person who talks about me behind my back or in a bottleneck or he, I don't go along well with him, I must understand that this relationship is good for me. I go into a circumstance which is very difficult for me. I must love that circumstance because I must understand and believe that this circumstance will teach me something new which I have not learned so far. It is good for me. One day we were all leaving for holidays and Swami said, Boys, are you going for holidays? I said, Swami, please come with us. Swami said, Yes, I am coming along with you. And Swami said, What is your question? Some boy said, Swami, what is the most important lesson of Swami's life? Huh? Swami said, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Swami immediately said, I'll tell you. And Swami said, if you want to follow only one lesson in your life from Swami's own life which Swami himself follows, that lesson is, whatever happened in the past happened for my best. Whatever is happening with me now, it's happening for my best. And whatever will happen also in the future will happen for my best. If you have firm belief in this, you will always be loving and smiling in your life. That is why, that is the meaning of surrender. That is the meaning of samarpan. That if you really want to follow Swami's teachings, then your physical well-being is important. Good health also is important. Secondly, good mental balance also is important. What do we do? All the time crib and cry about the past. Forget that all. What happen, whatever happened in the past happened for my best. Whatever is happening now is for my best. And whatever will happen for the future will also be for my best. If we take care of a physical well-being, also take care of a mental well-being by having complete faith in this teaching of Swami, that everything is for our best. I think certainly we have paved our path to spirituality, path to Bhagwan, with petals of gold. With this, I pray to Bhagwan that Swami bless us all, your children, let us all become your able instruments. Let us all become your good devotees, full-time devotees and not part-time devotees. Let us all help each other on the paths which leads on to you. Let us serve you, seeing you in everything that we do. Remembering that after being so busy, there are 24 hours still left to think about you, to dedicate it to you. Let us be your perfect instruments in this lifetime. And at the end of this lifetime, bless us that we all merge in one with you forever and ever, forever and ever. Jai Sai Ram. Thank you. Amen.